Hey everyone, thank you so much for being here today. My name is Denise, I'm also known as Hey Wig Sister on Instagram and Facebook. Today I'm here to bring you a wig review in partnership with Envy Wigs. Envy has partnered with me to bring you this review of Isabella. This is an Envy hair wig. Envy hair is a human hair synthetic blend, heat friendly synthetic blend, and Isabella is a really, really curly style. I can't wait to show this to you in two colors. I have her in chocolate cherry and toasted sesame. Most of this review is going to be a little bit different from my typical review. We're going to spend most of the time in the bathroom with an out-of-the-box styling session to help you understand what you'll get when you get Isabella out of the box. If you want to see more about this, then stick around. I am so grateful to Envy Wigs for sending me Isabella in two colors so that I could show her to all of you guys and help you on your wig wearing journey if this is a style that might be a good one for you. So before I talk too much about this and give you the lowdown on what this video contains, let's take a look at this one from all sides. This one has so much curl. We're gonna talk a lot about this. So I'm gonna do a quick introduction here. I'm gonna tell you just a little bit about this wig. And the rest of this video is really going to be me showing you how to work with Isabella out of the box. Because I have two of them, I'm fairly confident that if you decide to purchase Isabella, the next segment is going to be really important for you because I think you need to be aware of the challenges this one brings as far as out of the box challenges. I've talked about how to handle a wig out of the box in many, many videos. Curly wigs can be a challenge because of the way that curls are impacted from being kind of squashed in a box and living there for a while. There's lots of techniques you can use to get wake those curls up and wake the fibers up. Water is one of your best friends. So we're gonna talk a lot about how this one comes out of the box and you'll get to see that. But before we do that, let me tell you a little bit about this piece. So first of all, let's talk about density and permatease. This wig is a high density piece. This has probably the most hair uh, I've ever tried on any wig of this length. So the most dense. There is a ton of hair on this one. So much hair. So oftentimes when we talk about wigs, they're usually moderate density, sometimes low to moderate density. That's a really common space for wigs to be in in, in these ready to wear wigs. I rarely ever see one that's high density and I don't think I've ever seen one in a wig this length and I've seen a lot of wigs. So please be prepared. If you're looking at this thinking, oh my gosh, how cute. I mean, I think this is like wedding hair, fancy event hair, for sure this is like fancy hair. It has tons and tons of hair. I feel like this hair is just never ending. There's a lot of hair on this piece. There isn't, though, a lot of permatease on this piece. I would say there's a tiny little bit of permatease right at the crown. Not a lot. Not poofy or pillowy, but just a little bit. And there are just some crimpy fibers in the back here. Just in the back that help give those curls some lift. But there's no poofy, pillowy permatease. Any permatease I'm feeling are really just little crimpy fibers right at the cap level. So what you're seeing here as far as volume, if you're able to see volume, which can be really hard to see on video, it's all hair. This wig is full, lots and lots of hair. And I will talk about this a lot in the out of the box segment, which is going to be the majority of this video, very front heavy. The hair up front here, super, super heavy. Now, I've been working with this one a lot to get it trained away from the face to try to redirect these curls just with my fingers, not with any heat. And so I definitely think that it wants to train. These, these uh, fibers really want to do something different. They, you know, when you try to you know, turn the curls away, bring these fibers away from the face, 
they do want to cooperate because this was almost impossible in my face out of the box. And the fact that this is Envy hair, which is 70% heat friendly synthetic and 30% human hair, means you can take heat to this one and you can work with it. So if you wanted to take heat to this one, get some more lift in the front. If you wanted to straighten this just a little bit, maybe you don't want it quite as curly or you want to add some more curl because there's so much curl here but really no curl up here. So you might want to add a little bit more curl to give it, you know, maybe just a little bit more of the curl heading up toward the crown. You can absolutely do that with this piece. I can't stress enough though, this is high density. It's a lot of hair. And that's not positive, that's not negative. It's just a fact. I um, always wanna save you guys, either help you make a decision to get make a purchase or to avoid a purchase. Now, this is the inside of the cap. We have got a really unique cap. I actually talked about the cap in the out unboxing. I think I might edit that out and just do it here because it sort of fits with what I'm telling you guys right now. So this cap is really unique. You've got this strip of silicone all the way across. Then you have this lace front and a full mono top. There are no traditional ear tabs. The ear tabs are the silicone and this lace here. There are metal stays right inside there just like they are with the soft velvety type ear tabs. So you can get a really snug fit. The benefit of ear tabs like this, there is no bulk there. If you struggle with ear tabs and having extra bulk right here, if you wear glasses, if you like to tuck your wigs or you just struggle with that extra bulk, there is no extra bulk on this one. We have an extended nape and Velcro adjusters, which I really, really love. And um, something else to kind of be aware of this is a really stiff lace front with this silicone here. It sits really stiff on your forehead. So if you find yourself irritated by lace fronts when they're a little bit stiffer, my recommendation is just adhere it with something like It Stays or Ebon Spray or Got To Be Glued Spray. Something that's going to just sort of tack that lace down on your forehead and then it won't move. It's not bothering me at all and I sometimes lately have been sensitive to some lace fronts, but I wanna mention that. Something else I want to mention I didn't talk about in the unboxing is the transition line. So can you see right there? Here's the lace. There's that silicone strip. You can see the transition between the lace and the silicone. That, if you want to get mono top wigs, that can't be a deal breaker for you because you won't be able to get most mono top wigs if that's a deal breaker. All you have to do is take some powder, some face powder, maybe just a shade or two lighter than the stuff you use on your face, and just take a makeup brush and just dab it in there to blur that line. Foundation will work. It's a big deal. I don't think most people are looking at the top of your head in that way. I probably wouldn't worry about it myself, but I want you guys to know about that. The other thing I want you to know about is the lace. So let's take a look at this lace. There we go right there. And there's that lace front. It is just a little bit densely knotted and you can see those knots somewhat. I don't think that is a huge deal if you're going to keep this wig down because I really don't think you see that whole lot of that when the wig is down. But if you want to do some fun styling with this and I really think that if you're skilled at styling, you can take some clips and bobby pins and you can really make this into a fun updo with all of these curls. And if you wanna pull that up, then you might wanna add a little powder or something to that to hide the knotting. I do actually have a video where I show you how to do that. I also show you how to pluck a lace front and a part line to make them look more realistic. I really don't think the part line needs to be plucked unless you wanna part it in a different place because you can part it anywhere up here. But I do think the lace front's just a little bit densely knotted. You can absolutely fix that. And I would honestly rather a company get more densely knotted than make it very sparse and, and make that, because it's harder to fix that. I think it's easier to modify a wig to pluck the part line a little bit than to figure out what to do when it doesn't have enough hair. So I really do appreciate that. Now before I move on to the next segment, I'm gonna throw on uh, this other color, Toasted Sesame, it went out of my brain for a second and let you see that one on. Okay, so here is Toasted Sesame. Now I, do mention this in my out of the box segment, but this one feels a lot heavier up toward the front than the chocolate cherry. Feels like there's just a lot more, the curls are a lot bigger, more kind of 
gathered up near the front. This one has been combed out a lot. So this is kind of what you get when you comb it out and you fluff it up. I do want to show you something too that I find really interesting. So the curls on the bottom of these are very different. So you've got a lot of tight curls, kind of messy tight curls, and then you've got big barrel curls above it. Just a, just a really interesting, it gives it a lot of fullness on the bottom. Again, you can take heat to this one and you can make it your own. You can relax it a little bit. Definitely one that you're going to be able to play with. I'm going to talk about the color in a separate video because this one's going to be plenty long. I thought this was all super important though. If you are looking at this and considering it, I really want you to have all the information that you would need to make a good decision. I think this one is super cute. I think to me, this is not an everyday look. This is more of a fancy event. You're going to spend some time getting your hair looking just like you like it. This isn't really a throw and go wig. I wouldn't purchase this expecting it to be a throw and go, but I absolutely think it could be made cute if you're willing to put in a little time with it and make it yours. Let's go take a look at the out of the box so I can show you what you can expect. All right. So let's talk about Isabella. So I've already, I did my out of the box for Instagram. And when I was doing that out of the box, I did shake these out a little bit. I've really not done anything else to these. These are very challenging wigs out of the box. If you have an Isabella and you have feedback, please leave it in the comments. Help your wig sisters out. This is a big purchase. So I really want to make sure that anybody who's interested in this style has all the information. That Let's talk about this one before I do take any comb to it. Maybe I'll try them both on so you can see them both. So when I got it, I mean, these curls, they've, they've um, separated out just a little bit because I did shake it, but they were incredibly formed. And it had a bit of box hair because when you get a wig like this that has all these curls, when it's compacted in a box, it really does compact those curls and press them down. So that's a real challenge. Um, I think it's a challenge that can be overcome, We'll kind of see how it progresses as I play with these. Um, it may be a wig that needs some thinning in the front, depending on how you like your wigs and how you want to wear it, because it is very front heavy, but we'll take a look at that. Let me throw on Toasted All Sesame. Right, so here is Toasted Sesame. You can see it's just a total face flopper. Super, super heavy in the front. These curls are gorgeous though. And this, um, these fibers are really nice. They're really nice, realistic feeling fibers. So I should have looked this up before I started this video. I will make sure I've got correct information in the description. But if I recall correctly, I think this is 70% heat friendly synthetic and 30% human hair. If I'm wrong, I will, I'll correct it. But I have Emma. I've reviewed Envy Emma, and I love Emma. Emma is gorgeous. And I also have Jordan, which is a super short curly piece, and those are the same Envy fibers, so I hope I'm remembering it correctly. Okay, so what are we going to do? Really, the issue is this front section. It's just so, so front heavy. Now, normally, I don't like to comb out curly wigs. I like to finger style them, but because these are such huge big barrel curls, I really think it needs to be combed out a little bit. So that's what we're going to do to start. We're just going to gently run a wide tooth comb through. And actually, I'm going to turn it upside down because this nape, these nape curls are super formed. So I'm just going to turn it upside down and I'm just going to gently comb through, separate out those curls. Let me get that. This toasted sesame color is really pretty. It's got a darker, darker fibers at the nape. I have reviewed this color. I actually just recently reviewed it. And I think it was on the Amy wig, which is an Envy Amy short wig. Super cute one. If you haven't seen the Amy review, you should check that out. All right, so let me put it back on. It's just a little challenging with this wig grip. 
But once it's in place, it's going to be in place. All right, so we combed through that. All right, so it's really just so front heavy. There's so much hair in the front. If you're used to working with wigs, I'm gonna have to look in the mirror here and see what I'm doing. Let me see if I can shift the camera around All right, for that. Hopefully this will work better because I need to be able to look and see what I'm doing. So one of the things that can be really helpful when you're trying to figure out a style with a wig and getting it kind of all the box hair gone and setting the style is water, just plain water. And I like to spray it down and then just start moving the fibers around This is very, very common to need to use water on a brand new wig. It's my favorite styling accessory or tool, I should say. All right, so now I'm trying to figure out how the hair wants to part and how it wants to lay. We've got these big curls. It's starting to get better. It's starting to move to the side. The other thing water can do is it can help you, once you've combed through a wig, if you want to sort of refresh those curls, you can spray it with water and then do some scrunching. Everything that you do to a synthetic wig puts friction on the fibers. So combing it, scrunching it, rubbing it, all of that puts friction on the fibers. Friction will start to break those fibers down a little bit over time, just like clothing. You know, these are uh, like uh, fabric in a way. And you know, if you rub on your clothing a lot, you can get pilling, you can get fading. So that's true with uh, synthetic fibers. So you wanna be intentional about what you do with your synthetic wigs. And when you play with them, Try to have a goal in mind and don't play with them so much that you shorten the life of them. All right, look at how much better it's starting to look, you guys. Now this top is, is hanging forward, so I'm just going to, I'm trying to comb this back a little bit. All right, I'm gonna shake it out a little bit now because it's wet, but I'm liking the progress that we're making. That's going very, very well. And so I'm shaking it and I'm scrunching it. Now, something you could do, and I do with curly wigs a lot, is I, I spray them with water, I shake them out, and then I let them hang upside down and let gravity work on them to try to wake up those fibers, lift them off the cap, all of that. That may still be something I'm gonna do with these. But I'm just trying to really work with it while you guys are watching. So for those of you who don't have experience with wigs or you struggle, that you will know some of the techniques that you can use. Okay, I've gotta repart it because shaking it out disrupted that part a little bit. Boy, that top is so heavy. There's so much hair up on the top. It's really making it difficult to know where it wants to go. You know, sometimes wigs just fall into place quickly and sometimes they don't. That is the nature of wig wearing. See how much better that looks already? It still has a lot of hair in the front, but it, what this is telling me is the more you play with it, the more you comb through it, the more you work to train those fibers. This is what I'm doing right now. I'm training the fibers to go in a different direction. It's really responding well. What do you guys think? That looks a lot better, don't you think? 
I really don't know what the back looks like right now. All right. I'm liking where we're going with this. Okay, I did a quick switch. We're going to do a similar process with the chocolate cherry piece so that you can watch it again. So I need to kind of figure out where I want it to part. Since it's a full mono top, we can part it anywhere. And then start playing with the hair. This one doesn't feel quite as heavy in the front. Don't get me wrong, it's still very front heavy, but it just doesn't feel quite as bad. I'm mean, I not bad as much. <laughs> you can see that the curls and everything just aren't quite as full. And that is one of the things that happens with wigs. There's variation. And so being prepared to have that variation, especially when you may purchase multiples of the same style can be really, really helpful. See, it just wants to train. When I play with it enough, it does start to train over and you can see these fibers starting to stay in place just a little bit better the more I do this. And because this is heat friendly and human hair, you can take heat to this. So if you wanted to relax the curl a little bit more, if you wanted to um, add more curl to it, maybe there's some parts, you know, where you can see there's quite a bit more curl right there than right here. So maybe you want to add more curl over here so that it's a little more symmetrical. You can do that. Now, let me quickly talk about the elephant in the room here. I know some, some of you do not want to do this much work with a wig. You want to be able to take it out of the box, give it a good shake and plop it on your head. And that's valid, um, which is why these reviews and learning this about pieces before you get them is so important and why it's so helpful for me to actually have two. So I can show you, when, sometimes when you only get one, you don't know how typical that one is compared to others. When you have two, it gives you a little bit more of an idea. But, so let me get back to the elephant in the room I was talking about. You may be looking at this thinking, I don't wanna work that hard for a wig. And so then this might not be the wig for you, but you may love a lot of what you see here and be comfortable modifying a wig a little bit, taking some heat to it, thinning it a little bit, trimming the front up a little bit. In that case, you can see what you'd have to work with out of the box and know whether or not it's worth it to you to get it to do that work. It's really, really pretty. The, the hair fibers are so, so stunning. They feel amazing. It's just a really, really nice piece. So the work that you have to do when you get it out of the box will depend on your style preference. If you are looking for something that does have kind of a, a fullness around the face, this one might not need a lot of work. If, you're, if you don't like that fullness around the face, then you might have some work to do to get this trimmed up a little bit, thin this just a little bit, so it's not so front heavy. You can also, if you like to do updos, this might be a wig for updos because it's got all of those nice cap features and these giant barrel curls. If you're good with clips and bobby pins, I mean, you can really play with this play up the curls, get it into like a, a formal fancy updo. I'm not doing it justice right now, but you can see what I'm trying to get at. You know, bobby pin pieces up here and there, let some of the curls cascade down and spill over, maybe add a few more curls. And this could be a great updo wig, fancy wig. I took the wig cap off because it was just making it too hard for me to shift this wig around with it on. It sure was holding it secure. Yeah, it feels beautiful. All right, so at this point, it's just a matter of per your personal preference and how you wanna style it. I really don't think I'm gonna do any more in this video to show that to you. But now you know, maybe I should've put the other one on because you just saw this. Now you know, let's put that other one on. What 
you may have to work with if you decide that Isabella is the piece for you, or at least a fun challenge. Okay, everyone, I hope that helped you. I hope that if you were considering this style, it really helped you make a good informed decision. I want to stress that everyone is different in what they want in a wig. And what doesn't work for one person is another person's perfection. I, I absolutely want you to keep that in mind as you watch these reviews because I have a feeling some of you are going to have comments about how full and how much hair and how much curl if it's not your perfect style, but keep in mind, somebody else is going to absolutely love this and this is what they've been looking for. I definitely think this wig fills a gap in the wig market. I have never reviewed a wig quite like this one. I definitely think it's gonna take a little work to make it great, but I think it can be great and it's filling a gap. And so I'm really grateful to Envy for creating a wig like this and doing something a little bit different because we need some different styles every now and then. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching. Thanks once again to Envy. I'll talk to you guys in my next video.